In this video, I'm going to be designing a flying Tesla car, or bike, or just flying vehicle of sorts. A VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. One of those. It's going to be sweet. Why am I doing this? I'm going to pretend that Franz von Hausen has just hired me to help him uh, create the next Tesla flying car. Who's Franz von Helsing? <laughs> von Helsing? Um, sorry about the pronunciation of that name. I'm Dan O'Callaghan. I'm really excited to have you guys here watching this video. Please uh, like this video and don't smash it. Just gently caress the subscribe button. Eh? I'm going to start off by doing some fun sketches that are just a bit wacky and a little bit out there and then delve into some actual practical ideas about what this m in reality might look like. But yeah, let's start off by just having fun and messing around with some almost sci-fi like designs and see where it takes us. <laughs> Alright, cool. Enough rambling, let's get into it. Let's make some art. Let's uh, have some fun designing a flying Tesla. So according to Elon Musk, in interviews, uh, most recently on podcasts and whatnot, he's um, talked about how he wants to do a special version of the new Tesla Roadster that has basically uh, highly compressed air uh, in the back seats of the car. Instead of having back seats, there would be these tanks of highly compressed air uh, to the order of 10,000 psi, which would blast air down the bottom of the Tesla car to make it sort of temporarily have a little bit of a, a little bit of a hover without um, <laughs> without crashing or killing uh, drivers and passengers of course. My thinking is this design which is going to be a bit wacky is the next step of that taking it from just being a sort of a gimmicky fun uh, you know thing that lasts for a few seconds and having it actually be like what would it be like if I Tesla car and a VTOL were combined into one machine. I don't think this is ever going to be something that's going to come into reality and there's a few reasons which, well there's one reason in particular which I think is pretty valid which I'll uh, sort of explain to you at the end but anyway here we go. Like I said I didn't think that this uh, particular car rendition was going to be pretty. It looks like a friggin stagecoach or something. It looks weird. <laughs> Furthermore to that, I think if it actually was possible to have a four passenger car turn into a flying drone car thing with the wheels being really big and oversized, folding out, becoming these, yeah, propeller thingies, even if it didn't look butt ugly and weird and, uh, you know, even if like, you know, the weight involved was possible, etc, etc. Just think about it. If one person had this car, was driving on a highway, there's a stack of other cars. If that one person was like, yep, yeah, gonna lower the... Pro fine, they could just fly away, probably. But if every car on that highway had those propellers, having all of these dozens of cars just suddenly drop their wheels into propeller mode, and then all trying to fly at the same time, even if it was like a sort of automated driving situation, I feel like there would be some problems encountered there. <laughs> So this is what you get when you cross a Tesla Roadster, the new generation, with a drone. Yeah. Not very imaginative, kind of ugly. This one sort of looks like an electric type Pokemon. Squirtle. Tesla. Squirtle. Tesla. Squirtle. Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's move on to something more imaginative, huh? I'm just gonna put this over there. Get a nice big piece of paper. I'm not going to be too concerned about the practicalities of what is a realistic design or what would actually work in the VTOL space. I'm just going to do a bunch of fun, wild designs for what a Tesla flying vehicle might look like. I'm going to go really out there. We've got some turbine stuff. We've got some, you know, jet engine, uh, electric shit, craziness all over the place. Maybe bring in a bit of Star Wars aesthetic. We'll see what we can come up with, all right? Bringing in some SpaceX technology. Yeah, I'm gonna draw several designs and uh, yeah, it should be fun. 
All right, let's get into it. So these funny little designs are coming along well. I'm in the penciling stage, of course, which is where sort of all the ideas pour out. Went with a Tesla jet fighter. <laughs> I mean, they're an environmentally friendly uh, company. I don't know why they'd be getting involved with military applied vehicles. Don't think it'll happen. Um, I just was sort of getting into the whole uh, Star Wars-y vibe there. Just trying to have some fun. I used the Tesla logo as a reference for the shape of it. Of course, got the, uh, the rocket bike. Sort of roadstery vibe, some curves. You know, the front of that sort of has a Tesla 3, Model 3 vibe. Uh, and then of course uh, the windshield was sort of bringing up the cyber truck vibe and then the little finny things I'm gonna do them as if they were the fins that are on the SpaceX uh, rocket <laughs> Just going to the extremes of design and having fun with it and uh, then I'll quickly ink them and color them Obviously there's not going to be a Tesla flying car anytime soon or flying drone as we've designed in this video today, but uh, I was thinking I might have a look at putting a deposit down on my first car. When I uh, moved to Melbourne, I borrowed my grandmother's car. When I lived up here with my folks for a while, I used the old Toyota Hilux, so I was given it. So technically I've never actually bought my own car before. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put a deposit down on my first car and uh, the beauty of it is if I can't afford it in 12 to 18 months time it is refundable but I thought just for this video, just for fun, I might uh, put down a deposit on a Tesla Cybertruck. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. And oh, See that there, that's art, people. Look at it, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, exciting. Oh. <laughs> Dan's Tesla. Oh, shit. This is crazy. So now. I've just got to uh, work really, really hard, be really, really smart about things. Hopefully this happens. I've got some ideas about where this is going to take me too. I'm pretty eager to get on the road and explore Australia. I've been up and down the east coast, as far north as Cairns and as far south as Melbourne, but uh, I'd really like to take this thing out west, up north, west, southwest, basically anything with the word west in it, and uh, really get to know the rest of Australia that I haven't seen yet. I'd love to do that for a year or something, you know, just get in this thing, put a bed in the friggin' back, and uh, just drive around the country, and I'll take a video camera with me and draw pictures as I'm going, and upload art videos to do art with Dan. To do it in something like that, with 800 kilometers of range, some pretty hefty speeds, I think that'd be, That'd be one hell of an adventure. So we'll see. Maybe by the end of the year, if it gets delayed, which it may do, it'll be uh, next year. Ooh. Day two of continuing on. It's actually another week or so later. I've just had a bit of trouble getting back into the rhythm of making these videos, but uh, yeah, I'll get there and we'll get there and it'll be an awesome video and you're watching it right now. Like, how, how's it going? You enjoying it? Ah, uh, look. I'm gonna do everything I can to start getting into that rhythm and bringing out these awesome videos each week. So bear with me. I'm just getting my uh, getting my shit together. <laughs>
We've got the inking all done, and now I'm gonna take this over to this table, and we're gonna start colouring. And uh, it'll just be easier, because I got the Copics here. Before we get into the colouring of this awesome piece, I want to quickly do something. Do you remember in my last video when I said this? But to be remembered like a thousand years from now, what something that someone might do? What if an artist was to be the first artist to paint a portrait of the Earth from the moon? Since publishing that video, it's come to my attention that there is uh, something really awesome happening in the world. This fellow, Yasuka Maezawa, he's discussing how he has purchased eight seats on the very first space flight. It's a really great video. In it, he describes uh, sort of his whole ethos of how he wanted to reserve these seats to take a group of um, artists up on this spaceship. It's going to be going as early as 2023, I think. Yeah. Anyway, anybody can apply, and so I might be able to fulfill this little uh, dream that I had that I only posted about in this last video. <laughs> so Yusaku has outlined his philosophy about this, is that he wants to take up a bunch of artists, help expand the imagination of, you know, the populace, and uh, expand um, our horizons of what we can dream, and uh, what we can achieve as, as artists and as people. And uh, his, like, idea of who artists are actually expanded as he thought more about this idea and uh, he sort of thought no it's not just singers it's not just illustrators or painters or whatever but uh, everybody is capable of being uh, artistic and being creative and uh, so he's opened up this project to everyone anybody can apply you have to have a commitment to pushing the boundaries and encouraging your crewmates to uh, push the boundaries of what's possible and get excited about space travel and get excited about these kinds of uh, progressive, incredible, uh, creative endeavors. So, I'm gonna sign up for it right now with you guys and uh, then we'll get back into coloring this awesome Tesla SpaceX and uh, a little bit of one wheel here. <laughs> awesome, all right, holy shit. The crew roadmap. Subject change, of course. Everyone who pre-registers will receive an email about the selection project process. Uh, so pre-registration. Uh, initial screening by March 21st. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. Want to fly to the moon with me? Oh, jeez. The reason that I want to do this is, uh, can you just imagine? to be a part of something so historical. And I know there are dangers, um, you know, but like, for God's sake, getting to be one of the first people to go up on, on, on the moon, like one of the first, you know, 100 people, not even 100 people have been up, uh, up, up into outer space, have they? I'll check those numbers, but yeah, that would just be insane. Cool, so Australia, represent, yeah. <laughs> Dan at doartwithdan.com So I actually have a haircut booked in about 15 minutes So I'm just gonna go and do that and then I'll upload a picture and uh, yeah So, do I look like an astronaut? <laughs> what do you think? Huh? Pretty good? Alright, so here's the uh, Here's the uh, profile picture Alright, here we go, back to the art. Couple of colours, engage! <laughs> Came up with a few awesome designs for a flying Tesla vehicle. We got the T-shaped jet fighter, of course. And uh, who doesn't want a rocket bike, people? <laughs> and uh, then we got the solar plane. The idea there was uh, when the plane is landing uh, or taking off, the wings are closed in. And then when it's up in the air, 
it's uh, spread out wide with its solar wings and it can uh, drink up the sun's rays. We've got the Tesla jetpack, of course. Uh, this one had sort of an exoskeleton design to it, so the uh, batteries and electronic components could be stored in there. Then over here we've got the lawnmower design, this is where the propeller is uh, beneath the vehicle. And of course we've got the Star Wars pod racer. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the T-shape is, is there. And then in the middle here, we have, uh, of course, Elon. Another company I'm pretty fond of who's into batteries and electronic uh, vehicles is uh, One Wheel. So what would a, a Tesla One Wheel collaboration look like? But yeah, there you go. A schooner, you know, you had the pint and then you had the, or the McFly. <laughs> As for how a, uh, you know, vertical takeoff and landing vehicle that you could own just as commonly as owning a car, I'm thinking it'd probably be a two-seater situation and uh, maybe there'd be a VR helmet. The car literally just self-drives. Uh, I'd say though it'd be only a two-person uh, vehicle and it couldn't transform back into a car. It would uh, it would just be for flying. Maybe a hundred kilometers, eh? 100 kilometers an hour in speed and uh, yeah I'd say a hundred kilometers in range as well. That uh, Maybe that'll happen, who knows? As for me, like uh, putting that deposit on the Cybertruck and I believe it's a million people who pre-registered for the Dear Moon project. Uh, I think a lot of us have been really cooped up with the pandemic and thank goodness for the vaccine and it seems like a lot of us are able to start getting out there a bit more. And so I wanna have a go at more things and take some more chances because if you're not in it, you're never gonna even have a chance of winning it, right? <laughs> But yeah, it's about trying and having a go at things and like the way that I sort of approach any of these things is if the value of trying to achieve uh, or having a go at something is greater and I'm more passionate about those values than the feelings of fear. The more things you do in life and, and the more you chase after your passions and your values, the more courage you'll be able to uh, build and uh, you'll be able to take on these things and, and uh, you know, who knows? Maybe I won't be able to afford to, you know, fully pay for that Cybertruck in two years or whenever it comes out. And uh, maybe I won't be one of the seven people who get to go on the Dear Moon spaceship. But as long as I'm having a go and getting into all these different opportunities, I've got a chance and uh, of course that's what making this channel do art with Dan is all about is uh, not just hoping for other chances in other companies and other places but uh, building my own chances and opportunities and creating my own way of living and having fun and bringing value to my life and hopefully to yours as well yeah. I think I was feeling a bit of depression uh, just after the shoulder injury, I'm fully, like, physically fit again. I feel like it never happened and I'm feeling extremely good. I'm feeling better than I was physically before the shoulder injury. And I think I just had a bit of an issue with just feeling a bit down about myself and a bit unsure of what I was doing. But as soon as I started to remember the passion I had for making YouTube videos before December of last year when I had that accident at the, at the in the ocean um, I, rem I, 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 I was able to think you know this stress that I'm feeling now that was once a, uh, uh, that energy was once going into my passions for doing art and you know making these videos so I just had to remember that and discover rediscover that and uh, yeah uh, talking with family talking with friends that's the way to do it that's the way to Look after yourselves and have fun. And get back to your passions. Ah, uh, well, like I said, I'm gonna try and upload videos more frequently. Uh, I think I'm definitely gonna succeed because I'm feeling the burning passion for it again. And I'm really excited. I'll see you in the next video.